All right, keeping with the theme of the new year that, that you know I have going on, I want you to renew your mind, okay? Let's renew our minds, let's reset, let's refocus for the coming year and to better our lives, all right? And again, the best way to do this is by going by the word, going by the will of God, going by the ways of God. So I'm coming from Colossians chapter 2, verses 16 through 23 in the, uh, in the uh, NIV. Okay. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival a new moon celebration or a Sabbath day. The, excuse me, there are a shadow of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you. Such a person also goes on, goes into great detail about what they have seen and they are puffed up with idle notions by their unspiritual mind. They have lost connection with the head from whom the whole body is supported and held together by its ligaments and sinews. Grows as God causes it to grow. Since you died with Christ to the elemental spiritual forces of this world, why as though you still belong to the world, do you not submit to its rules? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. These rules, which have to do with things that are all destined to perish with use, are based on merely human commands and teachings. Such regulations indeed have an appearance of wisdom with their self-imposed worship, their false humility, and their harsh treatment of the body but they lack any value in restraining sensual indulgence. I'll stop right there in verse 23. So, so overall, what this is talking about, this is talking about rules and regulations that man has put upon himself. In other words, we want to be too spiritual. We want to be too religious. We want to add on to what God has already had in place. For example, my wife, Janesta, was sitting in her chair at work and some music came on, nothing raunchy, just nice mellow music. And she was moving to the beat of the music. Well, this woman came by and started to criticize her because she knows she's a Christian and basically saying, oh, you're not supposed to dance. Well, Janesta calmly put the woman in her place respectfully. And with dancing, the only way you should be criticized for dancing is how you, how you dance, like grinding on someone or twerking and where you're dancing say at a club where there's drinking and smoking and drug, drugs going on. And what a great example opposite of that would be Jesus. He was at a party, you know, when he turned water into wine. Another example is uh, Pastor Gino Jennings, who claims that any music outside of the gospel is against Christ. Well, I beg to differ on that because there's nothing wrong with a love song as long as the lyrics are not out of the way. Nothing wrong with the tunes and melodies of a nice jazz tune. And in his mind, talking about Pastor Jennings, he thinks he sins when he listens to jazz. Now, because Pastor Jennings thinks this way, it's not up to me to condemn him, for which I can respectfully suggest to him that you're cutting off your freedom of enjoyment. See, right there, there is a prime example of what this passage is talking about. And here's another one. When the Catholic Church imposes the rule of not getting married for priests, the Bible never says anything about them not getting married. This is something that they put upon themselves. This is an example of self-righteousness and limiting the freedom that God gives us. So go forth this year, this coming new year, and study God's word and be free in it instead of being burdened with rules that limit your freedom in Christ. Yes, the, there are things we should not do, but in this, this is what the Word and the Holy Spirit teaches us. Enough said.